This problem seems tricky at first. Do you actually have to do all of these calculations to find out the highest binary number? Actually, you just need a little bit of understanding how the binary number system actually works. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. As usual, we will go over the problem statement and then look at some sample test cases. We will briefly talk about a brute force solution and why it is not feasible. After that, we are going to understand how the binary number system is actually working and then devise a very clever technique to find an efficient solution. We will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a binary string. So binary simply means that the string will be composed of only zeros and ones. And there is a certain condition as well that this string contains at least one one. So you know that the string will not have all the characters as zero. Now, given the string, you have to rearrange all of these bits in such a way that you are giving me a maximum odd number that can be created. So what does that mean? For example, I have this particular test case with me. I have a string 010 and these are all the three bits. So how can you arrange all of these bits such that a odd number is created and that has to be maximum? So there can be so many different combinations. You can have 001, 100 or 010. Now, out of these, the maximum odd number will be 1. To understand it better, let us look at a different test case. This time, the string is 0101. So, you know that this one will have even more combinations. You can have 1100, you can have 0011, you can have 1010, right? So, so many different combinations. And the bigger the string, more the number of combinations. For this particular string, the maximum binary number can be 1001. And once you translate it to decimal, it will actually be 9. So, that is an odd number. Similarly, if you look at this third test case, my string is so huge this time. If you try to make up all the combinations, there will be so many different combinations. And out of all of those combinations, what is the maximum value that you can achieve? And it has to be odd. For this particular test case, your answer will look something like this. And if you translate it to decimal, it will be 225. And you can see that it is odd. So if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better now, feel free to first try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you look at the string, what is the first thought that comes to your mind? How do you attack it immediately in a brute force approach? The first approach could be that, okay, I have all of these different bits available. So I can try to make up all the different combinations and then convert them to decimal values. Out of all of those values, the highest decimal value will be my answer, right? So yes, it will give you a correct answer. And for small strings, this method actually might work. But if you notice, this problem statement says that this string can be actually very, very huge. So will you find out all of the different combinations and then try to convert all of them to decimal and then find out the maximum odd number? No, right? Because that is a brute force approach and it won't be efficient. So you need to think smarter. And when I say smarter, you want to actually understand how the binary number system works. So if you try to think about it a little bit, I have all of these decimal numbers available with me. And for each of these decimal numbers, this is the binary representation. And if you check for the binary numbers, you will have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, then 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on, right? If you notice closely, what do you see in the very last integer or the very last bit? You see that it is alternating between 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1. And if you notice closely, whenever the number is odd, the last bit will always be 1. Correct? And this is true no matter how large the number is. For example, if you look at the binary representation of all of these big numbers as well, whenever the number is odd, the last bit is always 1. So for all of these cases, check the last bit. The last bit is always 1. So you know that out of all of these ones, 
the last bit will always be one in your answer. So that takes care of one of the things. And in a number system, if you want your number to be large, what do you want to do? You want to have the biggest number at the very beginning. So you know that if you have number like 001 and 100, they have the same bits. But this will be a larger number because 1 is at the beginning. Similarly, if you have 101 and if you have 110, out of these, which number will be the larger one? It will be actually 110 because in the beginning you have 11 and in this you only have 10. And this is true every time. If you have even bigger number, now which is the larger one? Once again, this is the larger one because you will keep on comparing bits from the very beginning and then see that, okay, where am I getting the larger bit? So two things are very clear now that the last digit will be one and all of the bigger numbers, they should be at the very beginning. So based upon this approach, you can devise a solution. What you can do is you can count the number of ones in the string and the number of zeros in the string. So in this particular string, you have four zeros and you have four ones. If you have to construct the largest odd number, what will you do? First of all, you will write down a one at the very end. Since you have eight bits available, I know that I will have eight spaces. One of the bits has been assigned and now you want the largest number. So what I'm going to do? I will take up all of my zeros and I will start filling them. I had four zeros, so I filled them up one by one. And now what is remaining? I am remaining with three more ones, right? Because one of them has already been captured. So for the remaining spaces, I will simply write down a one over here. So what did I just do? I was able to rearrange all of these bits to get a maximum binary number that is odd. And based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this string that is passed in as an input parameter to the function maximum odd binary number. From what we discussed earlier, what is the first thing that you do? First of all, you will start a loop and then go character by character. You will count, okay, I have these many bits that are 1 and these many bits that are 0. So once you complete this iteration, you know that I have 4 zero and I have 4 ones, right? Now is the time that you start to construct your resultant string. To start doing it, first of all, you need to add 1 to your result because you know that at the very end, you will have a 1, right? So I start by adding 1 to my string. And since I have added a 1, I will do a count 1 minus minus. So technically, this 4 now becomes a 3. It simply means that I have four zeros to deal with and three ones to deal with. Now, add all of the zeros that you have available. So, I will add all of the zeros to my answer. So, in my answer, I do four zeros. And this takes care of all of the zeros and I don't have any more zeros available. What are you left with? You are left with all of the remaining ones. So, for the last step, just add all of your remaining ones. So, I will look at this 3. It means I need to add 3 ones to my left. My string is now complete. But if you notice, we have been adding all of these elements in the reverse order. This one, this had to be at the very end. But right now it's at the beginning, correct? So, to return the answer, you will simply do answer.reverse and then you can return it. So now, you will actually have 111000 as the final answer, right? The time complexity of this particular solution is order of n because you have to go over every bit to get the exact count of the zeros and the ones. And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because you do not take up any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see a problem and feel that, okay, I can do it very, very quickly, just take a moment and look at the problem constraints also. For example, in this problem, this particular string can be very, very huge. And then doing all of those conversions between decimal to binary can be so much time taking. And then obviously you will get a wrong answer. So just take a step back and try to understand how you can come up with an easy solution. 
try to understand what is happening and how will the problem work. For example, you could just see how a binary number system works and then you are able to come up with a very quick solution. So just keep that in mind. Also, while going throughout the video, where did you face a problem? And can you think of an even better method to come up with an even easier solution? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get right reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.